Hey everybody, it's Bob Crossan, Senior Managing Editor for Water and Waste Digest, and throughout the rest of the year, we have been featuring our WWD top projects for 2020 every single week for you. So today I have with me Dorian French. He is Senior Vice President of Major Projects for BGE Inc. And I also have David Miller. He is Major Projects Manager for the Coastal Water Authority of Texas. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the Loose Bayou Interbasin Transfer Project in Harris County and Liberty County, Texas which is aimed at addressing surface water challenges to improve water supply in the Houston area. So guys, thank you so much for being on the call. I appreciate you taking the time to, to do this with me. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. So for, first things first, I guess I'll start with you, David, on this one. Could you talk a little bit about this project from like a, a broader scale? Give us an, uh, some context to uh, the purpose for this project and kind of the scale of it. Sure, sure, Bob. Uh, the Loose Bayou Interbasin Transfer Project is a water supply project which is being built to deliver up to 500 million gallons per day of surface water to Lake Houston. The water is needed at Lake Houston because the city of Houston is expanding its current northeast water purification plant by approximately 400 million gallons per day. Uh, this project consists of three major components. We have the Capers Ridge Pump Station, which is uh, located on the Trinity River in Liberty County. The uh, pump station consists of an eight-bay side river intake and pump station. Uh, initially, it will be fitted with four 50,000 gallon per minute uh, vertical turbine pumps. And as the Northeast plant is expanded along uh, Lake Houston over the next five years will add additional pumps to get up to that uh, 500 million gallon per day capacity. Uh, next we have the pipeline system so connecting the pump station to our canal system we have three miles of dual 96 inch pipelines. Uh, pipelines are uh, cement mortar line spiral welded steel pipe uh, and we also have an associated pig launch and uh, pig retrieval facility uh, for future cleaning operations. And then the, th the third major component of the system is our canal system. It's 23 and a half miles of earthen canal, which run through Liberty County and the eastern sections of Harris County, uh, which will discharge the water to the uh, northeast section of, uh, of Lake Houston. So overall construction value about $200 million for, for all of those components. Yeah, one of the things that we noticed with the, with the nomination of this pro project was just the sheer scale of this project is pretty incredible. Uh, so many miles of pipe, lots of canals as well, the settling maintenance and, mason, uh, or, and maintenance facility, uh, and the lift station, as you mentioned as well. Could you talk a, bit, a little bit about the difficulties in, involved in managing a project of this size and scale? I imagine this is something that both of you uh, could address kind of from your perspectives as well. Sure. Yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll get started. The um, uh, the major challenge is just the remote location. The location of the pump station, the pipelines, and the majority of the canal system is located approximately seventy miles uh, uh, northeast of, of the city of Houston, and uh, there's not a tremendous amount of infrastructure to access the construction location. So a lot of that infrastructure had to be built in advance of the actual construction projects. Um, uh, canal system uh, built through primarily forested lands and former rice fields. So again, having to construct that infrastructure. And then really over the last three to four years of construction, we've had extremely wet weather. We've had Hurricane Harvey, we've had Tropical Storm Imelda, uh, we've had numerous five-year and 10-year frequency storm events, which uh, tends to slow a big civil construction project that, uh, that uh, uh, transects 30, 30 miles. So those are our main challenges. Yeah, how about for you, David, when it comes to managing a project of this scale or working on a project of this size, what were some of the challenges presented to you in this process? Sure, we have uh, seven uh, construction- oh, Sorry, I'm, a, sorry I'm, a, I'm a Dorian, I apologize. Okay. No <laughs> I figured it, I figured it. Uh, biggest challenges that there are not too many uh, pig retrieval facilities of this size in the country. So we did a, uh, David and I did a on the ground reconnaissance of similar 
large pig retrieval stations in order to get started with our design. Uh, the uh, size of the components, the 96 inch uh, knife gate valves, the pig retrieval uh, pipe are uh, quite large compared to what uh, what's around in the country. Uh, there actually aren't any pig retrieval stations of this size in Texas, so it, it, uh, it was a one-off, unique design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about the pigging itself and kind of the purpose behind it for this specific project? Uh, basically, uh, to remove biofilm and potentially uh, zebra mussels that, if they occur, uh, from the inside of the pipe uh, as the uh, pipe ages and the biofilm builds up uh, the uh, hydraulic grade line increases and the energy pumping cost goes up so cleaning it at, at periodic intervals over five ten years helps uh, bring it uh, back to a, a more hydraulically uh, acceptable condition Mm -hmm. Yeah, so David, when it comes to those zebra mussels, what kind of difficulties does that present to the, the entire system itself? And what were some of the solutions that you had looked at prior to the pigging solution that was brought in with this project? Sure. Um, well, the, uh, the main problems are uh, with zebra mussels is just the buildup and the blind off of, uh, of, our, of our screens at our, at our pump station at the, at the river. And then any metal component exposed to zebra mussels has the potential to, to collect and build up. Um, uh, what we did during the planning stages, and this is from the permitting through the, through the design and engineering, we set up an annual monitoring program. So we track the location of zebra mussels, um, not only through the United States, but now that it's into Texas and through the lakes and rivers in North Texas, we're tracking the exact locations of those to know and project when they will potentially reach the pump station. Um, uh, as far as elements built into the design, we have removable, removable screens and gates. Uh, so we can remove, if we do have a buildup of, of uh, zebra mussels, we'll be able to remove those uh, devices and do physical cleaning. Uh, we also have the ability to isolate our uh, pump station bays so they can be dewatered and physically cleaned. Uh, we have the pig facility, pigging facility, uh, which uh, Dorian described. And then we also have um, uh, chemical addition points uh, located at the pump station. So if we ever need to introduce uh, chemicals to, uh, to control zebra mussels, we'll have that, uh, that ability. So I think we're ready for them if they do make their way through Lake Livingston uh, down the Trinity River to the Capers Ridge pump station. Yeah. So, Dorian, you had mentioned kind of the size of this picking station being one of the bi big differences between it and others uh, in the area, specifically in Texas. Um, what are some of the other things that make this this picking station a little bit different from uh, ones that you, you've worked on before or other ones that you've seen in other projects? Well, I mean, there's, there's several unique things that uh, uh, first of all, it's all below ground, uh, which made it necessary to build a, a huge vault. In order to keep that footprint down, we used uh, the Victolic couplings to you know, make things fit together more snugly and keep the footprint of the vault down. Also, the uh, uh, we have a decant line for future uh, decanting uh, the dirty water after it's pigged in a receiving pond to settle out the solids. Uh, also, the building over the vault, the vault is totally removable. It can be taken apart in a day, and uh, the pipe components, if need, if need be, remove the valves, what have you. Um, so that makes it, it, it somewhat unique. Uh, the uh, 96 inch valve and the uh, settling basin, uh, all that was modeled uh, in order to de determine the uh, distribution of, of solids in the settling basin. Uh, 
and uh, optimize the, the settling of particles uh, in the settling basin. So it, several unique features. Mm -hmm. So moving back a little bit toward the primary focus of this project, which is the the, the surface water challenges and water supply. Um, could you talk a little bit about the dependency on groundwater in that area and how this is trying to alleviate that dependency and why that's such an important issue for the Houston area and spe specifically? Uh, sure. The, um, the, the primary purpose of the project is to um, uh, to move to surface water supplies and to move away from groundwater. There's been significant subsidence over the past 100 years. Some areas in the in, in Houston have actually subsided up to 13 feet. And so when you have subsidence of that uh, magnitude, uh, and given our location uh, next to the coast, uh, it really increases uh, flood potential uh, during storm events, which has uh, exposed a major problem over the last four to five years with the significant uh, rain events and storms that we've had. Uh, so uh, the region is in process of converting from groundwater to surface water and the major uh, regional water authorities and municipalities uh, are all implementing groundwater reduction plans and so goals have been set up. So some of the major goals are by 2025, 60% um, of the water supply should be surface water. And by 2035, 80% of the water supply should come from surface supplies. So that's what uh, this project is uh, one of the leading projects to get uh, moving towards that, uh, that, those conversion goals. Yeah, that's an incredible transfer and shift of supply <laughs> over it time. Uh, the, what, what, are, what do you suspect will be the primary difficulties in making that a reality? Um, it sounds like current, like with this project, you're on a good trajectory. Um, what, what do you think might be a challenge moving forward to reach the next goals and the goals after those? Uh, you know, I, I, I would say funding for the projects, but the funding is, it looks like it's taken care of. The Texas Water Development Board is, uh, is, uh, is funding most of the, uh, the projects. Um, uh, it's going to be getting those projects built. So the, 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 the project that starts it all off is the Loose Bayou Interbasin Transfer Project. Then you have the Northeast Water Purification Plant expansion. That's a $1.8 billion project. And then there's somewhere between two to three billion dollars of transmission line projects, which will be constructed over the next uh, three to five years. So it's going to be, uh, you know, getting those projects built on time, uh, sequencing those projects correctly, um, and having all of the agencies uh, in coordination with each other to get that built. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk about this project. I, like I said, the scale of it is really incredible, and congratulations on a top project award win for it. Because certainly sounds like you could you deserve it. You're putting things into a, into a good direction for the city of Houston and the surrounding area with this with this project. So, thanks, Bob. Thank you.